This is Burnaby Central versus Burnaby North Maroon. They're going to be playing a 4v4, no jungle, no smite. This game will be deciding who places third inside group A. This isn't the highest stakes game, but hopefully we can see a good showing and both teams will show good sportsmanship and have a good time in this 4v4. Flash1205 is actually an Orn main, as you can see by his club tag. Dale's a pretty strong champion right now, and without a jungler, it might be difficult to shut her down. So it's a very intelligent ban from North. Oh, hi guys. We had an initial problem with the mic, and uh, I'm Josh from Vantech, and I'll be uh, co-casting here. Central starting with a Lucian pick. Very strong ADC. Early game. Interesting that both teams actually banned majority top laners, and they still end up first picking an ADC. North's Riven pick could be flex top or mid, but it's probably going to be top. And it looks like they're going to go with the traditional support Nautilus. Compared to the last 4v4 that we saw, um... Alpha didn't opt for a traditional bot lane. Central opted for a very heavy lockdown comp with Lissandra and Malzahar. With only 4 people instead of 5 in the team, uh, Lissandra and Malzahar might prove far more stronger than in a normal 5v5. It's looking that um, North pick, actually picked Varus, and with Varus Nautilus, I personally play Nautilus, and Varus Nautilus is really strong in the bot lane because Varus can just press R and it comes out really fast, or Nautilus gets like guaranteed ultimate, and they both chain really well together. Seeing as uh, Central only has their support left to pick, we see the Yumi ban comes out from North. I wouldn't be surprised if North opts to ban Morgana as Morgana actually counters Nautilus. The Kali ban is probably targeting North's laner on Tamamo.
interesting that they actually opt for a Callista ban when they um, Central already picked their ADC, I presume, which is a Lucian, unless they're going for a Lissandra APC. North hovered a lot of picks there, but it looks like they are gonna stick with the Yasuo in the end. And wow, uh, Central is opting for Draven, so this could be uh, Alessandra or Mazahar support. I'm actually not sure where these uh, champions are gonna go. It'd definitely be interesting to see what happens though. We have a strong lockdown damage comp from Central, while we have a strong lockdown and combo wombo comp with the Riven and Yasuo knockup combo on North. We'll have to see who comes out on top. Let's go to intermission. I'll be playing some music for you guys. See you guys later. In game.
finally loaded in, and it'll be interesting to see whether either team opts for an invade. You have to give him in here, I'm actually still loading in. It looks like Central might be opting for an invade on North's red side through the top tri bush. Meanwhile, North is defending the mid river bush. We won't be seeing each other, and we'll have to see if the fight breaks out. Central is sneaking in. Neither team has any idea where the other is at the moment. Lucian is about to walk in the vision. Let's see if Nautilus decides to engage. Nautilus engages. Lucian gets rooted. He gets queued and he's about to die. He flashes and heals. Riven flashes over the wall and Riven's about to be finished off by Draven. But Varus flashes over and he autos the Lucian. Now Draven also gets taken down and we get a strong 1k gold lead at the first, very first minute from North. Yasuo uses Flash and Ignite, while the Draven uses Flash and Heal. The Lissandra had to burn her Ignite, while Lucian used both of his sums. Back to north side, we see that the support Nautilus had to use is Ignite, while Varus had the Heal. At the moment... Oh, it is a Malzahar support, by the way. At the moment, central support Malzahar has a Flash and an Ignite advantage on north spot lane. However, both north spot laners have Flash, having used both, their summoners, having used both of their combat summoners. Top lane has a TP advantage though on north side. We'll have to see how this pans out. Okay, it seems like my game is two seconds behind, but I hope that doesn't actually have a big difference in uh, commentary. So we do notice that Lucian went top lane, and we have the Malzahar support in the bot lane, as well as uh, Central is opting for three ignites. As Yasuo gets a level two on Lissandra and decides to go in and get some nice poke. Here we see Central actually getting level 2 before Burnaby North and they're actually able to push them away from this last two minions. Draven Malzahar Balin is uh, far stronger than the Nautilus Varus in an all-in. However, Nautilus and Varus do have a bit more poke than the Malzahar. As Malzahar has to use his E, kill the minions, and have it bounce onto North's Balin in order to do damage. Looks like River is actually going here on the Lucian. No, Lucian's able to just kite back with that E and River's forced to back off. We do see Lucian with uh, about 11 CS difference on this Riven just because of his, of his range, this range versus melee matchup. In one bot lane, Nautilus is going for an all-in on the Draven. Nautilus gets ignited. Nautilus is about to go down, but his W saves him as Varus E's to finish off the Malzahar. North is building a steady gold lead now at 1.6k, and they're able to take control of bot lane. Moving the top lane, we can see that Riven is unable to build up a clear lead, and she is slowly getting po uh, poked out. One thing I want to note is that Riven opted for Electric Q because she knows that Conqueror won't do much against Lucian. She wants to offer the quick burst and go for short trades like the one she just did. That turned out fairly favorably for Riven, but Lucian gets a nice auto-auto off at the end. Lucian top is really squishy, and if he gets all in, then he can easily die. Let's see if Riven's able to get the kill here. However, he offers a lot of poke, and if you're unable to finish him off, he's able to turn around the fight easily, which Lucian does here. Very well played by Central's top laner. However, Riven does have the TP, as the Nautilus is peeing, and she's able to make a quick recovery while Lucian has to back and walk all the way. Varus is going to opt for a pickaxe and a attack speed dagger. This shows that he's probably going for Gwinsu's, as well as his rune. The lethal tempo, this shows that he's going for the on-hit build. 
Yasuo's looking for some poke, lands a nice Q on Alessandra, and he's building up a steady CS lead. He's 15 CS ahead right now, which is around is around equal to a kill. Meanwhile, top laners for both teams, they have around even CS. However, Lucian's about to catch out wave, so Lucian might turn out ahead. Draven looks for some poke. Varus gets a bit of damage off, but he's safe. However, the Molestar takes two tower shots by accident. That's going to be huge for Central. Draven goes for a trade on a tower. He almost gets a Varus, but Varus flashes away. Draven gets baited in and gets killed. Nautilus hooks the wall by accident. Rip that wall, and Molestar lives. Varus is very low right now, so they, it will be hard for them to go on the Molestar, but if Nautilus gets a good Q off, they can kill Molestar easily, especially because Molestar's spell shield has already gone down. They'll just be trying to zone out Central's bot lane. And Lucian goes for another trade top lane with, with his level advantage. With his ultimate, he might be able to all in Riven and look for another kill. Maybe even under Riven's tower. There's no jungler to help Riven out, and Lucian does not have to worry about ganks. Varus pops off the spell shield, and Lucian goes for some mo more poke. Riven's in a very dangerous situation right now. She's about to die. Lucian can very easily go for an all in here. While Yasuo misses a Q mid lane, if that landed, he might have chosen to dive. However, you must remember, Lissandra's ultimate's very good at stopping dives, because as if you can't kill her immediately, if she stops being CC'd, she can easily lock you down, and you'll get killed by the tower as you're frozen. Riven's moving over, she looks for a trade, flash R's in, Yasuo R's, the wombo combo, Lucian flashes away and R's back, Riven almost dies, the R misses, Yasuo takes two power shots, flash Q's, misses, wow, Lucian gets away from that gank. Many summoners burn for both sides, all flashes burn from all three players, and Draven looks for another all in here, Nautilus shields it and gets away. Expertly played by that Lucian top lane, using his speed from his W to get away from the gank. Meanwhile in bot lane, although Varus got, is 2-0-3 while Draven is 0-3-0, Draven has a massive CS lead, almost 20 CS on Varus. That's almost 1.5 kills. Varus does still have an advantage, but we'll have to see who hits level 6 first. Whoever hits level 6 in his first in this lane will be able to go for an immediate all-in and turn the tide of the game. If Malzar and Draven hit it first, Malzar can easily R them, but it looks like the Nautilus and the Varus are going to hit 6 first. They're going to R the Draven, he's going to get comboed, and just as I was saying, Draven will go down. Unfortunate. They really got jump scared by the level six, sudden level 6 from North Spot Lane. Yasuo goes for a bit of a trade, but the Aftershock from Lissandra allows her to take almost no damage. Lissandra dodges another Q, avoiding an all-in from Yasuo, but once again, Yasuo is still ahead in CS. Yasuo goes in for a trade, but he gets rooted again. He was unable to punish Lissandra for not having her aftershock up. Meanwhile, in top lane, Lucian is shoving the Riven in, and he's going to be trying to zone her off to CS. If he's able to stop her from getting most of it, she'll fall extremely behind, and he might be able to carry the game from top side. However, Riven gets a level, and Lucian gets a bit too close. Riven goes for a short trade, but unable to finish him off. Lucian has gained complete control of the lane, and he's going to be shoving wave after wave into the Riven, making the tower steal her CS, and also poking her down, forcing her to back. Yasuo seems to be taking Raptors, getting a steady CS lead, taking the advantage of the fact that they don't have a jungler. I'm surprised that nobody has taken a buff yet, to be honest. The Mana Sustain could be very useful for Lissandra, but I guess it's difficult to take. And speak of the devil, the Lucian seems to be taking the blue buff at just as we speak. This Mana Sustain will help him out a lot, and it will allow him to stay in lane and punish the Riven. If he got some life seal with the consistent blue buffs, he may never have to back. Yeah, He's going to get this plant here. Welcome back, we Josh. See... Yeah, thanks, man. Yeah, some te technical difficulties, but I'm back, yeah. Here we see Lucian actually going back onto the Riven. Riven's trying to recall. Riven's going to start comboing this Lucian. going to get knocked up. Lucian cannot really cut away after he uses his E, and he's going to fall to Riven, actually. He used his flash earlier to get away from that gank by Yasuo and Riven, so now Riven's going to be able to take him down easily. She might even be able to get some plates here. However, the Lissandra is going in for a 1v1. Meanwhile, in bot lane, the Varus and Nautilus once again go for a Q, uh, RR combo. And the Malzar interrupts Varus by, uh, by ulting him, but his ult is interrupted once again by the Nautilus R. And now, North Spotling goes in for an all-in, kills the Malzar, they get another double kill. 
Yeah, see, that's just the power of the Nautilus Varus. If one of them goes in with their ultimate, the other one's just guaranteed. And then that's chain CC, and there's nothing really that this um, Central's bot lane can do against this. Malzhar wants to ult the Varus because he wants to protect his Draven from the person who actually deals damage. However, if he ults Varus, the Nautilus has tons of ways to interrupt the Malzhar ultimate and save his AD carry. So, Central's definitely in a very sticky situation here regarding their bot lane. Yeah, with, with North's um, early domination in all these lanes, we see a, about a 4k gold lead for them, as the scoreline is 9-1. to one. Yasuo goes to steal the Raptors to build a steady gold lead, and Lissandra goes to defend them. Yasuo hits the Q, but he's unable to ultimate because Lissandra roots him and ease away. Oh, uh, Lucian really putting a lot of poke, and actually, here's Yasuo and Lissandra able to... Ooh, giving gets a knockup, and Lissandra's... Force less than half. Yasuo could potentially look to dive this. Never mind, he opts not to dive this. Nautilus is coming in though. If he gets a knockup, Yasuo could potentially go in. But it looks like Yasuo opts for a back. Nautilus seems to be moving up. Interesting that Riven actually did kill the Lucian, and so she did get the blue buff, but she still is being pushed under tower. Actually, she is. She gets a knockup onto Lucian, but. She's just so low HP that she cannot go in. Lucian actually flashes in. <laughs> gonna get stunned up by Riven. Riven's gonna do a very nice job and actually gonna execute Lucian with her ultimate. An outplay coming out from this Riven. Very interesting fight there. Meanwhile, in mid lane, the small trades continue as usual, neither side taking much damage. And in balling, the Nautilus is fighting the Draven, while the Malzhar is fighting the Varus. Malzhar gets the Varus, and now Dr Nautilus is stuck by himself against two enemy laners. They're able to collect the shutdowns, and Draven might this might be Draven's path back to the game. Yeah, well, I wish we could have saw what actually initiated that fight, but it seems like they both got split up, and Malzhar versus Varus, I think Malzhar probably just ulted Varus, and Varus can't really do much against that. But here comes Lissandra to uh, Yasuo, Yasuo actually can die. Lissandra with that ultimate is actually able to just CC him. Draven's ultimate coming in there, almost getting the kill. Unfortunately, he didn't get either of the kills bot lane that uh, Central just achieved, so he didn't get the proc as passive. However, that R would have gotten him the chance to get some extra gold, but Yasuo's wind wall saves him at the last second, preventing Draven from getting the kill and from getting the gold from his passive. Hopefully, he's able to get a kill before he dies. And we see the Lucian still keeping that Riven very low HP, but... They are at even CS, so Riven's doing a good job. Even though she's being bullied, she's still staying relatively even in CS. Going back to the fight earlier, I mentioned how Nautilus is able to intra Mal's her ultimate, protecting his ADC. However, because they got split up, Nautilus was unable to help his ADC, and the Varus got bursted down by Malzhar. Unfortunate for North. But well played by Central. So you see Yasuo actually going onto the Lissandra. Lissandra doesn't have her uh, escape anymore. If Yasuo goes in here, that might be really good. Lissandra gets knocked, uh, stunned, but um, she gets knocked up by Yasuo. Yasuo is actually going to bring her very low, but unable to finish her off. She pops, <laughs> pops the stopwatch, and Yasuo is unable to get the kill on Lissandra, even though he tries to flash in. The start of that fight there, Lissandra very skillfully dodged Yasuo's EQ combo. She E'd and E'd reactivated it almost immediately, only dashing a minuscule distance, but that minuscule distance was enough to save her from the EQ. After that, she was able to proc Aftershock, which saved her from Yasuo's QR burst. Without the Aftershock or without that E dodge, she would have definitely died. Very skillfully played by Lissandra and very efficient use of the stopwatch rune. Unlucky yeah, for yeah. Yasuo. Yeah. Here we see... Nautilus and Varus coming into the mid lane, hopefully hoping to knock down that mid tier one. As uh, I can't see if they actually took down bot tier one. Lucian continues clearing his camps, and he's probably going to go for the blue buff again. Lucian runs out of mana early very easily, which is why he usually likes going for an Essence Reaver. However, Lucian delayed his Essence Reaver a little bit in order to get that Vamp Scepter, so he's going to need this blue buff to stay in the lane. Notice that North actually has Scuttle Control, but they're not opting to take that uh, that Dragon. Even They also have Bot Party, so it looks like a decent time to take Dragon. Malzar seems to be going in for a 2v1. Yasuo might be getting flanked. He has a ward in that bush, so if he walks up too far, they'll see Malzahar. 
He knows Molestar is there. Molestar goes in. This looks like a sticky situation for Yasuo. What? It gets cancelled. I believe Molestar cancelled his ultimate there. Unfortunate. But they still get the Yasuo without any deaths. Very close. Yasuo had a very nice win wall there. Almost actually outplaying that 1v2. But in the end here, it wasn't able to. Lucian had a huge lead on top lane, but Riven played very well, went for some outplays, and now she's back in the game and pushing down top lane. She's gotten over the CSS advantage, however, Lissandra is still 50 CS almost behind the Yasuo. Lissandra gets a nice stun onto two members of North, and actually they're gonna go in on this. Raven all comes in, actually chunks him. <laughs> Raven all coming in, getting Var slow enough for the tower to finish him off. Sandra Nautilus go for her back here while Draven shoves in bot lane and Riven shoves in top lane. Malzahar will be going to defend and Yasuo will be going to defend the Draven. There is a 3 level difference between this Malzahar and Riven though. Interesting, Riven is going to go in for this. Malzahar doesn't have his ult up so Riven could go for a kill here while Yasuo engages on the Draven. Draven is actually kiting out this Yasuo. Yasuo is going to be able to get under the safety of his tower but he is taken very low and Draven might be able to take this first tower. He's going to opt to tank it and he does take the top, tier 1 bot tower. We've been farming those Molotar minions for the plus 6 gold. Draven went for Death Sands here instead of Bloodthirster or Crit item first, which shows that he's probably trying to avoid getting bursted down by the Nautilus and the Varus combo. He also gets a lot more CD. He also gets a 10% CDR, which can help him out with his utility. He gets his W's up a bit more often if he doesn't catch his axe, and he also gets his E up, which allows him to save himself a lot more often. Yeah, speaking of items, I'm looking at Raven's items here, and it looks like she's not optimizing for uh, any MR, even though they do have a Lissandra and Malzahar, which offer a lot of AP damage. Instead of going to normal Death Sense, Shoujin, or Black Cleaver builds, Riven opts for a Lethality build with the Lucidity Boots, showing she wants to be extremely aggressive. While Lucian goes in with his Bork on the Varus here, but he cannot finish him off. Draven R's, and the Varus has to flash to get away. Let me see Central applying pressure onto this mid tier one. Uh, North is committing two members to this, but they might not be able to defend it. Here comes Raven from the side, actually goes in. Gets an ult onto one member, Lissandra is going to ult her. Nautilus actually CC'ing the Lissandra, Lissandra CC's him back, Lucian ult comes out, and uh, looks like both teams are going to be able to walk away with this without any deaths. However, while Central was trying to siege mid lane, the Yasuo was pushing bot lane. Lucian dodges both of Yasuo's Qs, and he gets Malzahar ulted. Lucian takes him down. Unfortunate for Yasuo. Yeah, we see Varus and Lawless have just been working their way up the map. First, they, well, they started balling, took down the tower, they were rotated to mid lane. Now they're actually in the top lane and putting pressure. Riven looks for a 2v1? Out. Yeah. She uses Yumus to get closer, but she gets silenced and knocked away by Draven. With this lethality build, I, she can burst down targets fairly quickly, so if she did go in for that 1v2, I feel like it would be very interesting to watch if she could come out on top. However, the Lissandra will probably be able to stop her, if she had her ultimate. Lissandra is currently down, so Riven might find a window to go in, especially when Straven backs. Unfortunately for Riven, she probably does not have enough damage to 1v1 the Lissandra without her ultimate, and by the time her ult comes up, so will Lissandra's. Note that it is uh, uh, it's fairly into this game and neither team have taken a single uh, single dragon or they haven't taken the herald. But it looks like they are they uh, North is taking a lot of these scuttle crabs, so they do have vision of dragon, but they just aren't opting to take it. I think without a smite, it's fairly risky to start an objective since there's no way to guarantee that you'll get it. Neither team has a champion like Cho'Gath or Nunu who's able to secure the objective, so neither team wants to engage them, and neither team wants to start the objective and get it stolen by the enemy. That would feel very bad. I'll start looking for an uh, all-in here, but he decides to back away. Nautilus takes some poke, and he's unable to kill the ward. I feel like Central is slowly clawing their way back into this game. As I mentioned earlier, they did 
they were at a 4k gold deficit, but now they have shrunk that down to around 2k. Central's been opting for a 1-3 strategy, sending three members mid while one person, either Lucian or Malzhar, has been defending the side lane. However, North has been going for a 1-3-1. 1-2-1 uh, I mean, sending two people mid and then having one person on each side lane shoving it down. Right now Yasuo is top while Riven is mid, uh, Riven is bot. Both teams continue taking jungle cams, getting the buffs, getting that mana sustain and that damage from red. Yeah, with all these jungle cams being taken, I think both teams, are, both teams will be able to get to their item spikes a lot sooner than usual if you had five members on both teams. Looking at itemization really fast, it seems like Lissandra went for Azania's first buy, which is extremely powerful in a 4v4 situation because there's only so much CC on the enemy team. It's able to save her from Riven's flash all in, it's able to save her from Nautilus's Q and Nautilus's R, and it's also able to save her from Varus's R. Finally, it's also able to protect her from Yasuo. Earlier, we saw her using the stopwatch to prevent herself from getting dived and actually getting a kill on Yasuo. And Lucian finally finishes his Blade of the Ruin King. It seemed like he was opting for Essence Reaver components in the early game, but he swapped over to building Blade of the Ruin King at one point. I'm not sure why. Bars E. Both teams, oh, yeah. both teams are opting for a, a 1 2 1 as of right now, so it's just very slow paced for the past few minutes. Varus is using his E to consistently pop off the Molotar passive, which is forcing him to back off, and it's threatening for Nautilus to all in. Earlier, I mentioned how Central was previously trying to do a 1-3, but after many failed attempts to get the tower, they decided to start doing a 1-2-1, just like North, because they were slowly falling behind to the side lane push. And both teams are just playing a, a very slow game, just farming up to their item spikes. It'll be interesting to uh, see our very first 4v4 that's going to happen hopefully soon. It might look like things are staying calm and fairly balanced, but you have to keep in mind that all of North's lanes seem to be having some form of prio. This allows them to take enemy camps and allows them to push out and then go to objectives first. As you can see, Riven took the red buff and the Raptors and the Krugs, while Central cannot get anything, and a fight erupts. Varus lands an R, Nautilus gets R'd, and Varus gets CC'd. Both of the North spot laners get CC'd, but Riven goes and gets a return kill on the Dre on the Lucian. Anyway, we just saw a collapse coming out in Central to two members of uh, North, and they actually that is very successful being a one for two trade. Raven goes for E and a dive on the Yasuo using his Death Sense to tank tower damage. Our Yasuo will survive. As I mentioned earlier in champ select, Central drafts with a strong Wombo team who will be able to lock down the targets. Uh, they collapse onto North's bot lane and they use their ultimates to permanently CC both of their bot laners, the ADC and the support. They couldn't even make a single movement and allowed them to be bursted before North's, the rest of North's team could come to help. You're looking at Lassandra's build again, uh, as you said earlier, she did go for the Zonias first. And it looks like with that lost chapter, she's probably looking for Luden's Echo. Nala's doing a very good job actually clearing this river vision. As I've seen him, just been watching him, he's clearing all these wards down here. Nobody is toppling right now, so there's a bunch of minions that aren't getting taken. North will be opting for a dragon. Let's see what, how, what happens. Yeah, it looks like North's actually able to get the dragon because uh, Central has no clue that they actually are on the dragon. Varus actually hits a very nice ult onto the Draven. Nala's flash R onto the Draven. Draven gets knocked up. Lissandra comes and gets a nice down of two of the members. Actually, ult enemy ADC and Draven goes down. It looks like Lissandra is also going to fall, but not before she takes down Varus. Wait, Lissandra makes it out, but yeah, so it's a nice tornado and it falls off of this R. Very powerful play by North, but now both their ultimates are used and Lucian seems to be coming in. He might be able to finish off and get a double kill here on a half health laners from North. Let's see what happens. Yasuo is healing up very nicely with his Vamp Scepter there, going to full health in an instant. Notice that North does have all tier 1 towers, 
all, all one of t Central's Tier 1 towers. It looks like Riven is still applying pressure on this top lane, bringing the tower down to... Actually, she is going to take this tower, Lucian isn't able to get there in time. A fight might be breaking out here. Riven goes in with her R, Lucian E's away, but he gets CC'd and he's going to go down. No, maybe? He gets it. Draven chases Riven down with his E and his W, but Riven is too fast with the Yuma's active and she runs away. Riven has the second highest CS in the game right now, while Yasuo has almost 10 CS per minute. North is building a steady CS advantage and they're slowly out farming Central's team. I just like to point out that uh, Riven popped the QSS, even though Lucian doesn't have any um, CC, it does give her extra movement speed to walk into Lucian as he tries to kite, but here comes Malzahar, just gonna press R on Riven, and Riven falls, and that is a 700 gold bounty going over to Malzahar, lining his pockets. In comp wise, I think both ha are fairly competent, but I think North's team is slightly stronger because they have the Varus and Nautilus Mambo combo, as well as the tank. And here Varus goes in for an R, Lissandra is forced to ult herself, which just makes it so she's going to die inevitably to Nautilus as he comes in, R's her, and they secure the kill. Now, once again, just showing the power of the CC of Varus and Nautilus, is actually Draven gets to trade the top lane tier 1. Meanwhile, Central does not have the tankiness of a champion like Nautilus, and both their lockdown champions are squishy. Lucian goes in here, though. He's going to burst that Varus, but Varus bursts back, and they trade one for one. All start chasing up a bit far here, but he has his ultimate. Let's see if he'll get the Nautilus. But he's taking damage from minions. Nautilus goes for a Q, just barely catches him with the lollipop, and Malzahar goes down. Yeah, very unfortunate for the Malzahar there. I definitely think he could have taken the Nautilus if he stood behind minions and was able to dodge the Nautilus Q. It does look like North is going to continue to keep pushing down these towers and gets mid tier 2. So the only tier 2 that's left standing is bottom tier 2 before they start cracking those uh, inhib towers. Draven has only gotten one kill this entire game, which is really unfortunate. because A lot of the power of Draven comes from his passive. He's able to get gold acceleration in the same way that Klepto does, but he has to get a kill in order to use it. However, he's gotten tons of assists, and earlier, unfortunately, when uh, when uh, Central got the double kill early on, uh, Malzahar was the one who got the actual kills. So that extra bit of gold may have changed the outcome of this game. Lucian also started falling behind due to Riven's intelligent itemization, opting for a full one-shot combo, so she's able to finish off Lucian and he's unable to kite her out. Malzahar might be going for an engage on Riven here, though he silences her. Oh, Yasuo's fighting Lissandra. And Riven gets away despite the Rylice. This looks like a 2v3 situation. Yeah. Varus is rotating down, making this a 3v3, but it looks like both teams are backing off. But Varus looks like on the map gonna. He keeps popping that Malzahar shield with his E, as you pointed out earlier. North backing off as they realize that they're in danger. Their top and mid laners have backed, so they don't want to get 4v2. Both teams are clearing their waves, but as I was saying earlier, North does have the lane priority and they're able to take the jungle camps. This is shown through their gold lead. They slowly went from 2k back up to a 5.4k gold lead. Also are going for some poke here, a fairly tense situation. However, it is a 2v3, but Riven is making her way over to help her team. Let's see what happens. Riven's, coming. Riven's also coming to support his team. And we'll see Riven coming in from the back line, actually gonna start up charging up her Q. She's gonna get stunned. She does pop QSS, but she does still fall to Draven because he does so much damage. Lucian all comes out, unable to connect. Not all hits a nice R. He's gonna keep going in. Lucian is 1v1ing that Varus on the side, and all this actually falls to Draven. It looks like Varus is gonna fall shortly after. That was a questionable engage by North because it was actually a 3v4. However, Yasuo does get a tower off of it, and they probably did not realize that the Draven was coming. They assumed that Draven would go defend the Yasuo. I think I like to see Nautilus with, when he hit that R just completely disengage instead of opting to fight as they did. So they do lose two more members that they potentially could have saved. But Yasuo hits a nice knockup onto Lucian, and Lucian actually falls to the ultimate. Yasuo is just autoing this Lissandra to death. Lissandra is forced to pop Zonius, and she does fall ultimately to Yasuo. 
Using his QSS, he's able to easily 2v1. Looks like Yasuo is actually just pushing down the uh, Central's base, and Central actually forced a TP down here. Oh wait, sorry. That is North's TP, pardon me there. Looks like they are looking to end this game, but Draven potentially could stop this with Malzahar. Malzahar actually ults. Riven's gonna go into uh, Draven. Draven does flash, but he does kite out the Riven. Raven also puffs Yasuo, and that stops any attempt to end this game currently. Well played by Central. They knew that Yasuo's QSS was down, so he used it on Lissandra earlier, so the Malzahar is able to lock him down, while Draven 1v1 the Riven. She used all her gap closures to get close to him, but she disengaged with his E, allowing him to slowly poke her down. And getting that kill is allowing him to utilize his passive and get some big items. As you can see, he has a Bloodthirster, a Death Sands, a Garden Angel, and a Phantom Dancer. Looks like North is starting up this Infernal Dragon. They'll, put, they'll will give them a lot more damage going into these fights. Red team has slain the dragon. Yep, and that is Infernal going over to North. Draven does try to take it with his ult, but unfortunately unable to. Looks like Central is pinging this Baron, probably looking to set up some vision, uh, potentially take it later in the game. We see three Bloodthirsters in this game, which is a very important item because it allows attack damage uh, champions to get an extra shield over healing and preventing themselves from getting bursted by the CC on the enemy team. Little skirmish between Yasu and Draven. Nothing comes out of it though. Central is actually gonna start up this Baron. No, they are gonna back off. They accidentally autoed it instead of the word. So here we do see North has two members. He's gonna knock down this last standing tier two tower. Riven coming in to interrupt the recalls. She goes down, and Yasu is forced to use his QSS, and he's trying to do the 1v3. Can he do it? He gets the ult off. Lucian goes down. Now he's hitting the Draven. He's hitting Lissandra. Lissandra goes down. He misses. Uh, Draven dodges the tornado, and Draven tries to kite away. He flashes away, and the Yasu goes down. Very well played. Boris misses an R. Note that if Draven did die there, he does have GA, so he probably would have respawned and killed the Yasuo anyways, but he doesn't have to uh, pop the GA and he lives. That was an interesting R by Varus as well, because Malzar still had his spell shield, so it wouldn't have done anything even if it had hit. Here we do see two inhibs have been taken by Burnaby North. This looks like a dangerous situation for North, but they're... Uh, this looks like a dangerous situation for Central, I mean, but Central's Draven is starting to get very strong. They might be able to bring this game back around. Yeah, but we just got a little taste of the damage of, the late game damage of Draven there against that, uh, that, was it 3v3, I believe? Yeah, 3v3. Looking at the levels here, Yasu is the highest level in the game at level 18, which is caused by the lot uh, by the lots of CS he's been getting. He's still maintaining a nearly 10 CS per minute, allowing him to be nearly full build at this point in the game. However, Malzhar is much higher level than the Nautilus, giving him access to his rank 3 ultimate, which will be very important. Lack of a frontline from Central has started to impact their fights, and North opts to start the Baron. Yeah, North is taking this Baron. Central is actually oblivious to the fact that they are taking it. Riven is going to start a 1v2 in the bot lane. Potentially going to make it out. Nope, she's going to keep hiding into their base. And, That's uh, desperately running away. Let's see if she can get away. No, that does not look like it. However, she forces the Sandra to use her R, so that might turn out in... Wait, uh, Malzahar actually flash R, or actually just ult. But uh, Varus able to just delete Malzahar. Actually, that's very close. As you see, Burst coming out from both of these teams carries. That life steal is absolutely insane coming out from Varus. They're saving him from the EDOT by hitting minions at the end. We do see Yasuo did build that more reminder to try to uh, mitigate some of the healing that Draven's getting from all of his life steal.
Nautilus actually opted for an Ardent Sensor. I'm assuming he has Font of Life, which is a minor rune that makes it so when you CC an opponent, they are marked, and then when your teammates attack that opponent that you have CC'd, they'll heal from it. This procs Ardent Sensor. However, it's not really a meta thing right now, so I'm fairly interested in seeing him off for this. Pretty creative item choice. Yeah, I haven't seen this actually at all. That's very interesting. Ardent Sensor also works on Solari, so this isn't a tr as troll as it might seem. Especially with the Yasuo and the Varus, Ardent Sensor is very good here. The only person who can't use it that well is Riven. We do see Varus actually hitting full build, finishing off with his GA. Now both carries do have GA and it is up for both carries. Godless goes for an R to defuse the situation. Both teams back away. Yeah, it looks like Malzahar is potentially looking to go in there. So uh, Nautilus does pop his R just to be safe and disengage. North goes for Elder here. Central's unable to contest. Now with this Elder, they're actually going to double their Infernal Break damage, which can be pretty huge if they actually go in for a 4v4 fight here. They're also going to gain access to the massive burn. From Elder Drake, and that might just close out the game for them. Once again, we see Draven's ult flying by, unable to take it, just a few seconds too late. Here we see Raven going onto the Draven, gets a nice stun. Draven's not kiting as of right now, Raven's just staying on top of her. Him. But Draven <laughs> just heals for too much. Wow. Draven yeah, face tanks Draven. all of Raven's burst damage and survives. Even without kiting, yeah, his life field is so much embarrassed. Almost pops the Sandra. Sandra's forced ult. Not only his ults again, pop on the Lucian. And as you said, the burn damage actually just killed that Lucian straight up. The Elder Burn combined with the Dubstep Ignite just instantly destroys his remaining HP. Varus goes for an all in on Draven here. Let's see if he can make something happen. He gets Varus' GA, but he's taken down, but he has a GA as well. However, Malzar, Malzar still has his ultimate. They might be able to do something here. Draven gets a kill on. Uh, Lissandra gets a kill on the Astro, and Draven goes down. Varus just attacking like a madman, firing out two, so many attacks per second. I don't even know what that attack speed is. It's uncapped because he's lethal, lethal tempo, and it looks like they're going to be ending the game. The Varus just absolutely destroyed Central there at the end. And that is GG. Brave North coming out over Central. That was a very interesting game. We saw very interesting builds and very strong carries from both sides. Because there's only four people, every single member of both teams got a lot more CS than normal. And they were able to afford end game builds. Yeah, you also hit level 18. Games don't usually go on that long, so it was pretty interesting to see the uh to see the end game builds come out from the Varus, allowing him to gain three attack speed. Go take a look at the statistics. Yeah, it's going over these stats here. Oh, we, we saw Draven actually healed for 10,000, which was a lot of damage. As we saw, he face tanked the Raven for so long there and actually came out on top. Yeah, and there, there, there is the healing done by Draven. And for the damage done, we can see that Varus really pulled his weight, doing that massive attack speed with the on-hit build, allowing him to hyper-carry his team to victory. Everyone played well, we had a strong showing, the 4v4 had really good sportsmanship, and a lot of creative builds. This was a fun game to cast, and my name was Anthony Han, and this is I'm with... Uh, Josh. And we'll see you guys next time.